What's going on you guys? My name's Ty Knotts and welcome to Top 5 Unknowns. 5 Parallel Universe Stories Found Online. Number 5 Me, my cousin, and my aunt were all outside on the front porch playing. We were all the same age, around 4 or 5. Two teenagers then approached us and asked if we wanted to see a castle. I knew this was bad news, but my cousin and I had to see it and we both agreed to follow. We went into the woods and walked along a trail for what felt like an eternity, probably 20 minutes or so realistically. We arrived to find a beautiful, gleaming, majestic castle in the distance. I'm talking something you would see in the movies. This place was made of heaven, it literally shined as if we'd entered a city of wealth. We excitedly looked at each other and sprinted home to tell our parents. The teenager stayed behind and never chased or followed us. Our run back was instantaneous, as if it took a few seconds compared to the walk there. We go and tell my mom and obviously she's freaked out and tells us to not play outside anymore. But here's the thing. My mom was so incredibly strict on me that she would have never let me out of her sight in the first place. The door to the front porch was open, so there's no way that two random teenagers could have actually taken us into the woods, let alone anywhere out of our parents' sight. My mom and my cousins were the only two adults at home that time. I've spoken to my mom about this multiple times. There's no church or anything nearby that could have been mistaken as a castle. I've even looked as an adult and no luck. All three of us remember this phenomenon though. Number 4 So my dog died around 2 years ago. He was a golden lab mixed with a German Shepherd. He lived about 12 years old and we sadly had to put him down because he had bladder cancer. Because of his bladder cancer, he would bark in the middle of the night to let us know that he needed outside. It was always my dad who'd be the one to hear him and let him out since his bedroom window overlooked the back door. So a year after my dog's death, my dad is woken at about 3am because of my dog's distinct bark. He groggily stands up and starts walking to go let him out. My mom then tries to wake my dad up further and asks where he's going. He says to let the dog out. My mom then informed him that the dog had been dead for over a year and my dad confusingly remembered this and went back to sleep. The next morning, my mom remembered that it was the anniversary to the day of our dog's death. Number 3 I was riding the bus when I found a lanyard with a set of keys on the floor. I was the only one on the bus and we were in motion when I saw the keys, so there was no one to shout after or chase as to find out who the rightful owner of these keys was. But as I looked at the keys, I noticed a store card for TIS, which is one of the bookstores that we have on my campus. I had one of those cards myself and I remember giving my name when I first signed up for the card. I took a shot in the dark and got off the bus by the quad. I walked down to 6th Street and went into TIS to see if I could get the name associated with the car. I didn't recognize the name at all, but I had an idea. So I went back to my dorm room. I walked up to the third floor and went to my room. I sat on my computer and logged into Facebook and typed in the name and sure enough the guy popped right up. Now this is the early days of Facebook when people would post a lot of information about themselves on their profiles. This is also before you could privatize your profile. As was the style at the time, his address and room number were even posted as well. He lived on the fifth floor of my exact building. So I ran up a couple flights of stairs and walked to his room. I knocked on the door and waited but got no answer. I knocked again but still no answer. I jiggled the doorknob and it was unlocked so I cracked the door and said hello but no one was there. So I opened the door a little bit further and noticed some guy napping on one of the two beds in there. I tossed the keys on the desk, closed the door, and walked away. I was then speaking with one of my friends about this later on and he informed me that no one's lived in that room for over two years. We went back up to check it out and the room was completely empty. Number 2 I'm a newlywed. We've been married for less than a month when I woke up at about 5.30 a.m. next to my husband sleeping and saw a notification on my phone. It was a text from him sent at midnight. The text read, who's this? Now I'm pretty sure that Sam was stretched out next to me snoring away at midnight. I'm a light sleeper and it's likely I would have woken up if he'd gotten out of bed or turned on his phone. But still, stranger things have happened. I figured he was playing a weird joke on me or something and I decided to play along. So I wrote back, who's this? 
He then texted me back seconds later and said I asked you first. I could feel Sam pressed against my side this entire time, warm and breathing regularly. I looked at his nightstand and confirmed that his phone was still there, dark and silent. So I responded again, seriously who is this? Why are you coming up on my phone under the name of one of my contacts? He responded, what name am I under? I said obviously there's some sort of crossed wires somewhere, we don't know each other. He responded with the town that I lived in, and I confirmed this. He then said, we must live near each other, what street are you on? Now I definitely didn't want to give this guy my actual street name so I came up with a random street and told him that. He then told me that he lived on Violet Street. I went completely cold. That's exactly the street that we live on. I turned over once again to confirm that my husband was still sleeping next to me and his phone was still on the nightstand. So clearly someone was messing with me. I decided to just turn my phone off and got up and got ready for work. Later that morning I showed the text to Sam who was baffled. His phone had no messages on it. He texted me to test things out and his messages popped up fine right underneath the last message from whoever this other guy was. I still haven't figured it out. Number 1 Rewind back to September of 2015. I was a freshman who just entered high school two weeks prior. Now school was already weighing down on me and I've been continuing a habit I had of taking long walks to clear my mind. On this day I've been walking around a pond near my house. There's a trail that goes around the pond and then the trail leads up to an abandoned set of train tracks on the other side, which sits about 15 feet above the path below. After walking the circle, I was crossing the tracks when I decided I wanted some ice cream. The fastest way to get to the shop was to take the path below the tracks, but there still isn't any way to cross the pond without going all the way back around. And being 14 years old, I decided that I could just jump from the tracks onto the path below and keep walking. The next thing I remember was being half conscious in an ambulance. Everything was extremely blurry and the paramedics sounded slightly panicked. I wasn't able to move either of my legs and I think they were both broken. This scene continued on for a few minutes until we arrived at the hospital and I was wheeled into the emergency room on a stretcher. I only had a few minutes in the emergency room before I eventually lost consciousness and that was the last thing I saw. After I'd been unconscious for it felt like an hour, I opened my eyes and I was on the ground. I just hit the ground after jumping but this time I was fully conscious. I hadn't noticed this before I jumped but there had been a car parked there watching me and the people in it had jumped out just in time. Apparently they thought I was trying to commit suicide or something. The ambulance ride had been exactly the same as it was the first time and I was put in the exact same emergency room before I died in the previous vision. The only difference between the two events was that I was fully conscious this time and my injuries were much more minor. I was discharged from the hospital the same night with only stitches in my lip and a slightly fractured jaw with a mild concussion. For a while after this I assumed that the first scenario had just been a weirdly coincidental dream that I'd had for a while while I was unconscious, so I didn't consider it anything abnormal. It wasn't until a few weeks later when my mom told me that the people who'd helped me said that I'd been conscious the entire time. I hadn't been knocked out when I hit the ground or anything, so the entire scenario managed to happen in just a few split seconds it took me to hit the ground, while I was completely conscious. I've been trying to put the pieces together but still to this day I have no idea what happened. Here's a quick bonus story for you. I'm 21, I currently live with my uncle Gary. He usually picks me up from university and takes me back to our apartment. Shortly after we got home, he has to go to work. One day when we got home from him picking me up, I fixed a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and sat down to watch TV. Shortly after I sat down, he was off to work. He told me he'd see me later that night and took off out the door. I began to read a book when I heard a rustling about in his bedroom. Then his door opened and out steps my uncle. I'm shocked as I know for a fact that he didn't come in because we live in an apartment and there's only one way in and one way out. I asked him how he got back in and he said nothing but gave me a weird look with a smile on his face. His head was tilted as he walked right out the door without saying another word. I immediately got chills and realized something wasn't right. I ran to the door to see if his car was leaving and his car wasn't even outside. I don't know what to make of this and I believe it's some sort of weird glitch in the matrix or something. He said he never came back and thinks I was dreaming or something. It's truly scary. Whatever it was that walked through our apartment, it wasn't supposed to be there. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video be sure to click that like button. Also don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep updated with our videos.